Hi, my name is Darren Joseph from HGJ.tax. We're the team that seeks to demystify this sometimes confusing world of international tax. And the privilege of having a deep conversation with Mark. Mark, can you please introduce yourself? I'm Mark Morris. I'm based in Switzerland. I've been here for about 26 years. I've specialized in automatic exchange of information, which originally was the EU Commission's EU Savings Tax Directive. And that went on until about 2014. And they scrapped that and they adopted the OECD's FATCA made into CRS. So can you share with us what it is you do professionally? Primarily, I mm -hmm. provide custodial services for mm -hmm. trusts to hold underlying entities or partnerships or unincorporated funds. So what I do is I provide the administration services for the custodial. I don't do the actual custody. And later on, I'll explain what administration services for custodial is. And uh, I'm an expert in CRS and CAF, and I certainly know the intricate differences between CAF and CRS. We'll get into that in a later question, okay? So I've published over 600 articles on LinkedIn, and I'm still writing about 10 a week. And I don't see other people covering 99% uh, of the topics on, on CRS that I cover. Okay, thank you. The income test of a custodial institution, does well, that have anything to do with the assets held on behalf of someone else? Well, before we get there, it's interesting to note, what is a nominee versus what is a custodial institution? A okay. nominee, we all know, is somebody holding the assets for somebody else. Yep. They're not a financial institution. And there are many words for nominee besides yeah. straw man, okay? It could be the agent, it could be the yeah. signature, it could be the guardian. It could be. So what distinguishes that from a custodial institution and believe it or not, so what's a custodial institution? It's an what entity it? and a nominee. We talk here of nominee entity that okay. holds assets for somebody else. That's mm -hmm. a nominee, but mm -hmm. earns more than 20% of its fees from custody fees. So that's what you've got to focus on. What are the fees that it earns? I've seen yeah. some people write very well-known lawyers say an investment entity won't earn custody type fees. Well, there are six types of, there's a list in FATCA and CRS. It's the same list word for word. Mm -hmm. of these are the custodial type fees. They say type. Mm -hmm. So it's a normal bid offer spread and what you expect to holding assets for you in security. But there's number five and number six is the weirdest. Yeah. Uh, and I usually put a painting of a Picasso next to that saying, that's how weird it is. It's like a Picasso painting. If you provide financial advice on assets that are held or potentially to be held. Now, to me, I've never heard of a cust custodian providing that advice. It might provide the advice on assets that you already hold. Maybe they give you advice you should sell this. But that's not really a custodian's job, is it? But there it is in CRS. If they provide financial advice on assets that pay potentially be held, so they're mm -hmm. telling you, we think that you should buy this share, then that's a custodian institution if they charge you. And so this 20% of the fees mm -hmm. is 20% of the fees that the custodial charges. It's not of the income of the underlying assets because mm -hmm. they earn that income but the, a, a normal custodian would earn income from investments, but then they owe it to you. So in the balance sheet, that's you know a liability and an asset at the same mm -hmm. time. So you're only looking at the fees that they charge. So getting back to the difference between a custodian and a nominee, and a nominee it's only the fees. So what I'm saying is easy to convert a, a nominee into a custodian. And the funny and thing is that nominee can be a custodian for a custodian institution. It's like a mm -hmm. sub-custodian. Okay.